This video is a response to the video uh, from the Don't Tell show called Is Cinema Dead? First question is, what is cinema? And I was thinking about this, that when Andre Bazin and other early film theorists were grappling with, with this question back in the 30s and 40s, I think they were looking at it primarily in terms of what makes cinema unique from the other arts. When we think about it today, I think we have to think beyond this now to what makes cinema unique from other moving images. Now with you know, television, web-based video, video games, and virtual reality, uh, you know, is cinema uh, a different medium? Uh, is it a different experience than these other forms of moving images? And I would say that for me, cinema encompasses potentially all moving images. Um, I think how those images, uh, or wh what those images look like is, is going to be very different from how we've traditionally thought of it. I don't think, uh, I, I don't think cinema anymore means having to uh, make a commercial, you know, two hour narrative feature film that's watched in a theater with an audience on the big screen. Uh, I think n now there are all these different possibilities that have been opened up uh, for the moving image. And that, that all of these, for me, kind of fit under this larger umbrella of cinema. Uh, the, the, to me, the moving image remains really the, the uh, foundation, though, on which all of it is built. Uh, and if you go all the way back to you know, the earliest films of the Lumiere brothers, like the train arriving at the station, all the way up to the short form uh, content that we see today on platforms like YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok, I think that the moving image really remains the, the core of uh, what is cinema. I do think there's a lot of questions within that about how, the, how those images are manipulated. I, and I still do think that those are, are central to it as well. Uh, the, the questions of time, uh, editing, and the fact that every image and uh, arrangement of those images represents a choice on the part of you know, directors, cinematographers, editors. I do think all that remains central to thinking about what, what cinema is, uh, but rather than trying to limit or narrow that definition, I think it's, uh, I think it's fruitful to expand it. I think, it's, uh, I think it can, uh, by expanding how we think about cinema and looking at its connection with all these other uh, forms of moving images that have, have emerged in you know, more recent uh, decades, I think it can only really expand how we, we think about cinema generally and uh, allow us to see a lot of potential there, a lot of possibilities that otherwise uh, you know, we might miss if we're sticking with a more, uh, some of the more traditional ways of thinking about it. I do think one of the um, other, other big uh, differences is, is moving away from, um, you know, as, as film becomes more and more affordable and moving away from a lot of the commercial considerations that I think in the past that uh, those expectations sort of were, were imposed upon cinema and, and almost helped to uh, define cinema. I think that as a lot of those, uh, a lot, as, as, as film, as, as cinema and filmmaking is freed from a lot of those commercial considerations and restrictions, I, I think that it'll open up a lot of different uh, ways of thinking about you know what it is. Um, second question is: Is cinema as a language dead? I would say that in terms of cinema as a common language, uh, yes. I, I think what's happening is that the way the the way that cinema maybe functioned as a kind of common language over the last century. Um, is you know is dying? Uh, I think we could say, but I would add that it. I don't really think of it so much as dying as it is evolving. Uh, what, what's probably true is that there is no longer that one uh, that one way of of making a film that uh, such as the uh, classical style that, that dominated the commercial cinema for for much of the last century. I think now what we are seeing is a lot of different approaches that are uh, gaining traction, gaining uh, more, much more widespread acceptability. 
you know, again, talking about short form content on the web, for example, uh, that, that's just that's just one example of how uh, there, there's a lot of a lot more alternatives now. I think that are that are um, have gained a lot of traction and are all you know perfectly valid. As uh, uh, but but I, I think what will happen is that as more of these different approaches um, appear, that over time they will they will become uh, they'll sort of form their own codified uh, grammar and languages of. Uh, in, in, in the same way that, again, like the, the, the classical style of uh, cinema filmmaking did for much of the last century. I think that'll take time. You know, I think that each of these, these new formats brings with it maybe initially a set of new expectations, and then over time they, those evolve and uh, could be said to constitute a kind of uh, a language of their own. I do think that what we'll see is rather than one kind of dominant or common language of cinema, uh, as we've seen for much of the past century, we will see uh, multiple languages emerge, each that, uh, uh, like I said, bring with them their own sets of expectations, their own conventions, and that function in really unique ways. Um, but yeah, I think, I think just as cinema itself has really moved beyond a lot of the traditional boundaries and restrictions uh, that have defined it for the last hundred years, I think with that will come a, uh, inevitably a, an evolution of the language of cinema and uh, will reflect that, uh, that variety of approaches. Third question is, what is the future for cinema? Uh, without wanting to get into a lot of predictions, I'll say that one uh, one thing that I see for the future of cinema is that it will become increasingly fragmented and, and segmented. And as there are arguably as many different, um, as well, as film moves, I'll say this first, that as film moves increasingly towards uh, a, a, a truly, to becoming a truly democratized art form, uh, thanks to the developments in the technology, uh, not just in terms of being able to make your film, but now to deliver it to audiences and to viewers. I think we will see uh, increasing fragmentation of both in terms of the types of films being made, but also what viewers are looking for. And I think what we're seeing now is the technology and the delivery systems are, 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 are evolving to a point where that's becoming um, increasingly possible and it's unlocking a lot of really exciting possibilities. Uh, I, 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 I do think that we are, that the, the more traditional models of viewing cinema, of sitting in the dark with an audience, watching it on a big screen in a, in a movie theater, you know, it's hard to say. I don't know what the future holds for the, for the more traditional um, models at this time. I think that it will remain a part of the experience, certainly, uh, for the foreseeable future. But I do think that the ways in which uh, the content and the work is um, is, is delivered and, and consumed or viewed or however you want to put it, I do think that that will uh, continue to um, become, uh, I, I think that there'll just be more and more ways in which to do that. Uh, I mean, the obvious things are, of course, we, we you know, television, uh, nothing new, but, you know, watching video on smartphones, um, you know, just, just simply at that level of the technology of how we can watch things has opened up a lot of uh, possibilities. But I, I think the, the fragmentation that I'm thinking of has a lot to do with all the different uh, voices now, all the different perspectives and approaches that will be possible thanks to the democratization of the technology. This goes back to the idea of the, uh, you know, Alexander S. Druk's idea of the camera stilo in 1948, uh, and of course what Francis Ford Coppola talked about in, his, uh, in, the, in the documentary Hearts of Darkness, when he talks about the idea of, you know, the uh, you know, kid in, you know, in Ohio or whatever who uses uh, her parents' camcorder to make a, a brilliant piece of personal filmmaking. I think it's that emphasis on the personal uh, that, that I, I really am getting at here and that I see as being uh, 
what's, what's really exciting to me for the future of cinema. Again, I think freeing it from a lot of the commercial limitations and restrictions and thinking beyond that and thinking about film and cinema generally as a form of personal communication, of personal expression, I think that's where the greatest potential lies right now. Uh, as I say, I do think it will become increasingly fragmented as a result of that. I don't think that's a bad thing. I, I think it simply reflects um, a greater variety and uh, greater a greater variety of possibilities to uh, get ideas across and what those what those ideas uh, will look like when they're when they're you know put into action when they're visualized. So. You know, my I think my, I would say that the for me the future of cinema looks very bright. It looks very exciting. Uh, I, I I do think that uh, we're only beginning to see a lot of the what the possibilities might look like as they continue to develop. But um, you know, I do think it's that increasingly moving towards the true democratization of film, which has been going on for a while now, but is becoming uh, more and more of a reality. I think those ideas that have gone back, uh, you know, at least to the 40s and and beyond, are uh, closer than ever to to being fully realized. And once that happens, that what what cinema what cinema may look like on the uh, as we kind of uh, arrive at that point may look very different. But I do think that uh, it will be, uh, you know, overall it'll be richer. For all, for all the different uh, in innovations that are coming. Uh, anyway, that's, that, those are my thoughts on these three questions. I hope this is of uh, some use for your documentary. Um, you know, for the Don't Tell Show, feel free to use this uh, in your documentary. And I uh, hope these were of uh, some use in thinking about these questions.